an important message from Balthazar Quayle. Tonight's presentation is from Globo Dogs. I'm hungry. Castle and Impossible Foods brings you a most tantalizing food experiment. It's the Impossible Slider, created without cholesterol, without hormones, without artificial flavors, and most notably, without beef! Primarily a product of soy leg hemoglobin, topped with your choice of cheese, pickles, and onions. This juicy burger substitute is sure to slide its way into your heart. So, How's your seven days been since we last saw each other? Me? Oh, I'm doing great, as you can see, as you can plainly see by my visage. I, I was having a bad hair day. Hmm? Now why did the dog say that? It feels so out of his character. Like to stand on legs. It's a riddle. A centipede. That's 100 legs. Scorpions. Arachnids. Eight of them. That's eight legs each, so that makes 64 legs? 164 altogether. Jackals. That's four legs each, and they pass two by two. That's eight. And four times. Four times eight is 32. 32 plus 164, that's 196. The hooded assailant flees the scene. I would assume this is a two-legged man. 196 plus two? 198. Hmm, 198. Episode 198. Did anything of note happen on episode 198? to the, uh, the Hobby Sriracha P review that I did some reviews back, and I think to myself a strange scenario. Suppose you locked me in a room with these Hobby Sriracha Ps, and you shoot me <laughs> Stupid light, Nagami, you got what you deserved. showed up again. I am error. I am error? Huh? It's gotta mean something. I am error. I am error. I am error. I am error? The heck could that possibly mean? Well, I guess the mystery is going to continue to persist for the rest of this episode. It's your good buddy Hottie Scotty Pancake 603 once again, and disregard what I said at the start of this episode. I'm not hungry! I'm not hungry in the slightest! As a matter of fact, I have a little bit of a stomach issue going on right now, a little stomach bug. The last thing I want to do is eat something. Actually, no, the absolute last thing I want to do is eat something this weird right now. But unfortunately, the backlog of episodes that I have of Yucker Yum over the horizon is just dwindling smaller and smaller and smaller. I'm starting to catch up. So here I am. It's episode 199 already. I mean, this is a groundbreaking episode. One episode away from the big 200. I really have to hustle. So regardless of the fact if I'm hungry or if I'm not, I got to keep, I got to try to do one of these every day if I can. But... To give you an idea of what time it is as the, you know, as of the time of filming, this is what America is talking about right now as of press time. This is something called the Impossible White Castle Burger, or more effectively known as the Impossible Slider. Um, this is brought to us, it's kind of like a, a collabo between White Castle and a company called Impossible Foods, uh, a California-based company. Um, they invented something called the Impossible Burger 
which was a mainly plant-based product. Now I've had veggie burgers for this show before, and they've all been subpar. They all have a similar taste. They all have that weird grainy, dry kind of taste. And that's what kind of turns me off to anything plant-based. And that goes for tofu and like that, that fake tuna that I had a while back. The problem with these things is that they're just, not just the fact that they don't taste like meat, which that's a big problem, but they're just so dry and they just don't have that, that texture that meat has. I mean, I completely commend the people who are trying to do this, to go out and create a meat substitute because I've mentioned, I've talked to Blue Streak about this, I don't want to kill the animals, I love meat, so there's got to be some kind of solution to this conundrum. Well, thankfully we have scientists working around the clock to simulate the taste of meat through tofu, plant products, um, the Impossible Burger, if I'm remembering correctly, it's uh, like a starch slash wheat mixture that they, they kind of concoct this, this meat substitute with, and I admire the fact that they actually went and did the work to do this, but at the same time, there's two things going against this product right away. Number one, you look at this thing, it's covered in onions, it's covered in cheddar cheese, smoked cheddar cheese, as far as the, uh, the description says. This little burger right here, you think you're probably gonna like cut some calories by ingesting this thing? That is far from the case. As a matter of fact, they say that a burger of this size will probably be about roughly 300 calories. That's, you know, pure grade A beef or whatever grade beef there is in a slider. The veggie slider, I'll give you one guess how many calories this is. 300. Yeah, there's absolutely no no benefit to eating this over a regular cheeseburger. It's almost the exact same caloric intake. You're gonna be just as fat inhaling these burgers as you would regular White Castle cheeseburgers. And number two, what I was mentioning before, how much do you think something like this should cost you? I mean, that's another thing that keeps people from eating healthy is how much these things cost. To buy this at your local White Castle will run you about a buck ninety-nine. That is too much money for something that is this small. I know it's plant-based stuff, and I mean, you'd think that if it's plant-based, if they created with like all sorts of stuff that you grow in a garden, and they didn't have to butcher a once living animal in order to make it, you think it would be cheaper. But no, it's 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 more expensive. You can buy a regular king-sized hamburger at McDonald's for, for less than a buck ninety-nine. You can get that on the dollar menu, that's almost half the price. Goongala, goongala, but let me take a whiff of this product. I'll let you know what I think of the, uh, the scent there is. Whew. Something very, almost like lentil soup-ish about it. As a matter of fact, when I look at it and I smell it, the, the look and the smell go together on it, I'm picturing those like really, really cheap microwavable burgers that you might see at like a dollar store, like a schlock lot or a dollar general. You go back to the frozen food section and there's always that, you know, the, the, the freezers are like half open and everything's like defrosting and there's like those soggy looking burgers and like these melting cardboard boxes. That's exactly what this smells and looks like. If you'll take one gander at this beef, you'll see it's got that same slimy texture. But you know what? The sliminess is actually something that maybe I should be a little bit happy about because they say what this has over your normal typical veggie burger is that it has juice. That's right, that's the big selling gimmick here. A uh, impossible burger over a veggie burger has juice. This is a vegetable burger that bleeds in your mouth. I don't know if I should be scared or what, but um, all right, I'm gonna take my first bite and I'll let you know what I think. Good Lord, this is impossible. Mmm. Hey, pickles. Ah. Well. I'll say this about the taste. Come on! I mean... Enjoy the world of the Pink Tope. It was created by the finest restaurateurs from all quarters of the world, and I personally love the ease in which fine meals are preparable. In a refrigerated tote, the approximate measurements of the finest ingredients are stored, with a helpful packet teaching you various, easy to follow ways to prepare over 500 different types of healthy, delicious meals comparable to those you'll find at the finest five-star restaurants. 
If you like a particular mail, feel free to order it again, or try one from the suggestions tab when you return to totes. I am all thumbs in the kitchen, and even a dummy like myself can prepare these exquisite mails in typically less than an hour. How can you argue with that? This week's menu includes prodigiously piled pepperoni and parsley pillowed pilaf with pure portobello pureed pasta, delicious diced duck divisions dotted with dates dill dip mix dolped with daikon dandelion drizzle, fennel falafel fajitas filled with feta and filetta fondue furnished with a fruit fusion and fig fingers, hollowed honeydew holding hot honeyed ham and haricot hake with hibiscus herb and horseradish hash high and havaya and hand flour. So what are you waiting for? Shop online at www.therealpinktoke.com and start making healthier choices today. All right, let me refresh the memory and take another bite of this. Thanks a lot, Pink Tope. Something unbelievable is happening right here. Does this taste like pure beef? No, it definitely tastes like something is amiss. But you could probably fool me. Like if you gave this to me and didn't tell me what it was, I would eat it and I'd probably say it's some kind of strange meat, not the best quality meat, but it's definitely meat. So that, I'll give it some points over, you know, over your run-of-the-mill veggie burger. It's got some major bragging rights there, but it really does taste like one of those microwavable cheeseburgers, the ones that are always kind of like off-color, the ones that you get at the dollar store. It tastes kind of crappy, like really crappy quality beef, like lesser quality than your typical cafeteria hamburger, which... If you're going to White Castle, there's so many things there to tempt you. They got their regular cheeseburgers, they got their delicious onion rings, they got the jalapeno cheeseburgers, which I, you know, I inhale those things. They have all these other options that, you, that are way tastier. You're going to probably want to kick this to the curb, but I got to give it a lot of credit because it really does, I mean, it does really taste like it's not really, it's not a completed work. But they're on the right track. This is definitely closer than I've ever seen or experienced anybody coming to meet. It really boggles the mind that this is like a, a wheat slash starchy byproduct. I mean, I'm eating this thing. You could really fool me into thinking this is a cheeseburger, like a really, really F quality cheeseburger. So if I were to give this a half rating, sorry, very, very rude of me. Let me uh, swallow that bite. Give me some time to think. I'm gonna have to give it some major, major brownie points. Excuse me. I'm gonna give it four hops because it is not the most tasty thing in the world. I probably wouldn't try this again, but I gotta give it a major, major thumbs up because they really, they really tackled an impossible task. And it really, what they pulled off really is, is crazy. It's, it's just, I don't know, I'm just, I'm having trouble processing just how, how much they were able to nail that taste. When I put this thing in my mouth, I was expecting that same run-of-the-mill, uh, like, veggie burger taste. It doesn't have that veggie burger taste. It tastes like a cheeseburger. It just tastes like a very low-quality cheeseburger. So, do I ding it for that? No, I should really commend it for that, because we're on the right track. I mean, at the same time, I feel kind of odd about it, because, hell, Freaking human beings created the internet. We got invisible machines like processing data all around me as I speak. We still can't completely nail this taste. To me, this is something we should have been able to accomplish like 10 years ago. But still, this is, you have to try it to believe it. And, um, you know, I feel like I'm a little bit behind on the eight ball. I'm probably like, you probably already watched tons of different videos on the internet about the Impossible Slider. Lots of other people have tried it. Lots of more reputable people, people who are on TV. Like I heard Jimmy Fallon uh, was trying this burger on his channel. But all that doesn't matter. What matters is me. Me? Oh my God. I forgot about me. Sneeze me. What about my? Me! Me! I forgot about me! That's another two! Add it all up, that's 198 plus two... 200! Why did I need the calculator for that? Anyway, it's episode 200! It's gotta be it! I guess that episode 198 I am error thing was just a red herring. <sighs> 200.
200. That's right, I'm on to you. You've been harping about episode 200 for a long while, you white fluffer! You know what, I just gotta check one thing. Huh. The disenchantment of a single guest will spell the end of all things. Okay, I think I follow. So, whatever this dark future of Hottie Scotty is, it's gonna be kicked off by a disgruntled employee. So, what I need to do is go back and watch past episodes of Yuck or Yum, find the one who's most complaining, smooth things over, cancel the apocalypse. Yeah. Me. <laughs> I am smart. I know exactly what I have to do now. <laughs> Episode 200, here I come! Well, let me not get ahead of myself. Let me focus on the now now. Uh, what to say about this in conclusion? Well, if you're any bit curious about this product, I say go to your local White Castle and try out an impossible slider because it really does boggle the mind. I'm not going to promise that you're going to fall in love with it, and as a matter of fact, you're not going to fall in love with it. You're going to take one bite of it, you're going to say, it tastes kind of off, you know? If you've ever eaten one of those weird gray meat cheeseburgers, you know, a dollar microwavable cheeseburger with the hard bread and all of that, yeah, it tastes exactly like that. But that is a major, major step up from your regular veggie burger. You're going to take one bite and it's going to taste like really nasty meat, but still, it tastes like meat, and that should be commended in my book. So, yes, there's a lot of work that's going to still have to be done on, on a product like this. I'm not going to be rushing out to buy it, but, you know, you keep working on this, keep trying to perfect that formula, we're on our way there. This gives me hope for the future. Way more than those tofu pups ever did, way more than that vegan tuna ever did, way more than Tofurky ever did, any of those products that I tried in past episodes, they were not even close to nailing it. This is close to nailing it, and you really have to shout bravo for that. So this is your good buddy Hottie Scotty Pancake 603 saying until next time where I once again answer the question, is it yuck, is it yum, or is it yuck or yum? And here's a reminder, next time is episode 200! I can't believe we made it this far! <laughs> See you then, guys! Hey, Hardy Scotty! You looking for your most disgruntled employee? You looking for a guy who's got ample reason to bitch and complain about the state of Denmark? Well, let me tell you something. I'm gonna make your little search easy for you. You're looking at him right here! Uh, I mean, listening to him right here! And I've got a pipe bomb that I'm fixing to drop on the 200th episode next week! In fact, I've got a little spoiler for you! I'm gonna slip off my wrestling boots, slip on a nice pair of lugs, the cushiony footwear which are built to last through whatever mother nature can throw at you, I'll get me a nice pair of those with some good hard tread and a steel tip, I'll polish the steel tip up real nice, turn that mother sideways and shove it straight up your candy ass! <laughs> that's a Steen Aston trademark right there. The Rock says son of a bitch, I say mother it's different! Hell yeah, hottie scotty DTA, you stupid piece of trash! You held me back for the very last time! You interrupted my interview with the fly, you never gave me a raise, Hell, son, I was better treated by Eric Bischoff, and that son of a bitch fired me through FedEx! Anyway, to all my fans out there, next week's gonna be awkward and ugly, so I'll say this now. It was an honor and a privilege to come out here and entertain you. I'm sorry it had to end so soon, but if you had to deal with such a dopey piece of sh** as Hottie Scotty, you'd do the same thing! I'll catch your asses down the road, and buy some Lugs footwear. Your feel, thank you for it!